If you could have a coach help you identify and focus on what's important, would that accelerate your success? If you answered yes, then this podcast is for you. Each week, my guests, professional coaches, will share one actionable piece of advice to help you level up wherever you need it most. My name is Chris Ippolito, and welcome to the Get Coached Podcast. Hi, Diane. Hey, Chris. It's good to be here. It's great to have you on. Um, So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, when when we did our pre-interview call, we had shared that one of the things that you you shifted your business to is really helping entrepreneurs uncover their uniqueness and then leveraging that to, to grow their business more. So I was wondering if you could share a little bit about you know, why that transition as well as like, how do you go about actually helping somebody find that uniqueness? Okay. Um, The transition is, life is a progression. I mean, I I started out, I got my master's in in counseling and coaching, started out doing things the way I'd been taught. And then I began to see that um, my way of doing things is a little different. And so I trusted myself and it evolved. And uh, then I learned how to use my uniqueness. So as I started working with clients, I began to see that when I I really listened to them and we had time together over a a period of a month or whatever, I began to see that there were areas in their business that they were not paying attention to and that they were so suited for. I mean, they had this incredible ability to do this thing and and, in a particular way that they were ignoring. And that was the gold in their business. Mm. Um, I think a lot of times like we we study things and and that's good and we need to. And I think we all need to start out doing what we've been taught until we evolve our own way. And we're all unique. We all, there isn't one person on this planet that is not unique. Mm. And the ways that we're unique, sometimes they're more subtle. Sometimes they're right in your face but they're there. And that's the, the gold in all of us, if you will. And that's the thing that makes a business stand out. Yeah. So yeah. You, you were saying that sometimes they were avoiding that one thing or, or not focusing on it. Why, why, like what would be the, the reason? They just, don't see it. they just don't see it. Okay. One of the things that we have as human beings is we don't see ourselves correctly. And that's why we all have coaches. Tony Robbins has three. I have one, but you can't see what you can't see. So um, we take it for granted. Let's say you have certain gifts. You take them for granted. You assume the whole world has those gifts because you're so used to them. And that's, that's your way of being in the world. And you assume that everybody else is like that in the world and they're not. So it takes sometimes somebody from the outside to help us see what's unique in us because we we don't see. And the other piece in that, a corollary to that, I want to add also, is we all have patterns. And they're called that for a reason. It means that we have a habitual way of looking at things, habitual way of doing things. And it takes somebody from the outside to help us see that. And mm. sometimes we get in our own, well, sometimes we always get in our own <laughs> way until we learn how not to do it. Yeah. And there's, there's no exceptions to that. It's, it's universal. I don't care how powerful somebody is or how rich they are or how unique they are in some ways. They have patterns they do not see until someone helps them see it. That's yeah. just it. It's part of being human. Yeah, it is an interesting characteristic of humans is that we're so blind to not just our strengths, but especially our weaknesses. And it's really great to have that outside perspective that a coach can offer to to be able to help uncover it or dig it up a little bit. I was wondering if you could share the story again with the audience because you shared it with me, but you'd, you'd mentioned and shared a story about a client who she was able to... Uh, effectively triple her income just by helping uncover what that uniqueness was and creating an offer around that and a service around that. Sure. Um, This is very interesting. This is someone that I started working with that was a very withdrawn, very quiet person, very competent. 
and tremendous amount of integrity. I mean, what she said she was delivering, she delivered and more. But as we started working, I, I realized that she was pretty bored and we're bored when we don't use who we are. So, and you know this, Chris, personally too, when you're using who you are, all of who you are, you're excited, you're, you love life, you feel vibrant, you feel really alive. And yeah. when you're just using a little bit of yourself and giving people what they say they want from you, it's really boring. So I helped her to see that and also to gain some confidence because even though she was very um, skilled, the confidence wasn't there. And again, she didn't see what she had. So as we were working, I said something to her, and I don't want to get too much of this because she's pretty identifiable now. Okay. So I'm being a little cautious about this. But um, I said to her, you know, you really are, and I said, kind of a, a quality. And this is what you have to offer people. They're not seeing this. And the other piece that's important is there was a place in the market for it. So um, I, I just read uh, Napoleon Hill's thing, and he said, to make sure that you're going to be good in business, you have to see that there is a need and that it would be almost impossible to replace you. So I thought about that too. And this was a niche in the market. Um, a lot of companies are not paying attention to how the money's coming in and out and who's handling their money and what the structure of the business. And these would be small businesses. So a small business, right. what is it, 50,000, 50, I'm sorry, 50 million and under is a small business these days. Yeah. But the, the, in the old days, a $5 million business would have been a small business. But so she was able to address that. So there was a need in the market. And she had a really unique way of putting this together. And, and now she's dealing with um, pretty powerful people because she can help them. And the whole point is, and I, I read this and I used to be, I used to sneer at this, but when people started making a lot of money, they were saying that they were helping people. And I thought, yeah, right. But it's true. <laughs> I mean, everybody needs help and whatever level you want to work at, it's open. Right. So she um, started to do this and first um, she changed how she was working with her current clients. And then some new clients came in and she started working with them in this very different way. And that's what she's doing now. Her income is not quite tripled, but by the end of this year, it will be at least tripled. That's amazing. So it, it is, you know, and my job is to help somebody see it. I can't do it for them. I mean, this is in them. That, this was in her. This is her genius, if you will. Right. Um, but my job is to help people find that genius that's going to put it out there for them. Which we've already mentioned it, having that outside perspective is going to help, but let's, let's see if there's a way that we can help the audience here in, in the case that maybe they're not, they haven't quite made that decision to work with a coach though. They realize that there's, there's value there. Maybe there's, there's a couple of different reasons that maybe are holding them back from it. And they wanted to try and figure out, what's their uniqueness? What's their, their special gift that they could yeah. do exactly like you said, like shift their business a little bit. Now all of a sudden they've got this unique offer, which because it's unique, they're, they're able to just demand a higher price point. Could you walk through a little bit of maybe what you would do with a client as far as like helping them uncover that uniqueness? Um, it, it's a little different. I listen. Okay. So I'd be listening to someone. So what I would say to somebody that I'm not face to face with is, when do you feel most alive? What is the part of your business that really excites you? What mm -hmm. is it when you get up in the morning and you know you're going to do this, you think, wow, this is really good. Or if you're in the middle of working with a client, all of a sudden something lights you up. Those are the keys. So okay. the more alive you feel, the more on target you are, the more you're using whatever your gift is, even if you can't name it, but you know when you're there. Right, and, right. And that's, that's what makes people know that they're on target. If you're really bored, and let's say you're very confident at doing something, bores the hell out of you. 
it's not your gift, I, even though you can do it. And one of the things for people who are multi-talented, that's kind of a drawback, you can do almost anything. Doesn't mean it's what you should be doing. So yeah. again, you know, even though you can do a multitude of things, if it doesn't light you up, it's not where your genius is, despite the fact that you can do it well, right, if that right. makes sense. But it's that aliveness. I mean, you know from yourself yeah. how you feel when you're working the way you want to work. It's, it's a whole different world. Yeah, it's the, I guess how I would build on that is when, what is it, what's the kind of work that allows that person to easily get into a state of flow where time just, almost evaporates. Because for me, when I'm doing the kind of work that I really enjoy, I, I'll, I'll look at the clock and go, oh my, it's been three <laughs> hours, but it didn't feel like three hours. Yeah. Uh, or, or you just, you almost feel more energized after putting in that work than you did when you started. Those are some good indications that I've used for myself as far as whether I'm going down the right path. Um, so I think that would be maybe something that could help build upon just that like an exercise for our audience to to see if they could uncover what their uniqueness is or what maybe at least have a better idea of the direction they want to go right one of the things about human beings when we pay attention we know the truth and you can feel it in your whole body mm. you can hear if you're dealing with other people you know when they're not telling the truth but for yourself and you call it flow i think that's a really good way of addressing it but you know you you know when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing you feel it and that's part of the gifts of being human that we can feel it in ourselves when we're doing what we are here to do yeah and 100%. Other, yeah. But the other thing I want to point out too, um, it's an evolution. And the way I mean it is um, you might start out doing one thing and it leads you to something else and it keeps evolving. And uh, it's like this client, she kept evolving. Um, so it might not be the end all be all. You might one day feel like, oh, this is absolutely wonderful. I love this. And you'll work at it a year, two years, six months, whatever it is for you. And then all of a sudden it leads you to something else. Because I, I had this conversation with somebody and it really interested me. Um, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life and I started out as a dancer. I was in the professional theater. I became a metalsmith. Um, I've had boutiques. Um, I've had radio shows. I mean, I've done a whole bunch of things and each thing led to the other and the person i was talking with was somebody who um was very very competent and had a job for like 30 years 40 years um and it's just different mindsets so um for entrepreneurs we're, we're risk takers we're risk takers we're creatives we keep thinking of things so i think to uh get to the place where you think aha uh -huh, this is it and i won't do anything else for the rest of my life it, not true. I 100 percent agree. I feel <laughs> I feel like even just for myself personally, it's been just a journey of acquiring skill sets and developing mindsets that have just ultimately led me to where I'm at right now. And I think that's just I, I think that's the journey that all humans go through. But uh, as you mentioned, entrepreneurs just they think a little bit differently and they they tend to look at the world in general a little bit differently um and we're risk takers that's the other yeah, thing we, we can sure. tolerate um a lot of risk a lot of people can't but i we think can it's tolerate. i almost sometimes think it's not necessarily a, a tolerance of risk but it's a viewing risk in almost like a different way like russell yeah. or um richard branson has talked a lot about this where he's actually said like, I don't feel like I've taken any risks in my career because he's just so good at reframing it or, or putting himself in a position where he's minimized the actual risk. Whereas from the outside, there's this perception of enormous risk. And, and I think entrepreneurs are just very adept at um, kind of reframing it and restructuring the risk so that they're minimizing it for themselves. Yeah. I think that's well said. I think um, the risk thing comes from an external um, thing where people talk about, and, and I've seen it statistically about high risk or low risk jobs and so forth. But yeah, 
I mean, it, for us, for entrepreneurs, and I'm sure most of your listeners are probably, um, it just evolves. It's like, wow, wouldn't this be great? And I was sitting down the other day, um, and this is important. This is the other thing I want to tell your um, listeners, if I may. And that is when you sit quietly by yourself and you just write down things, think about a subject and then write down whatever comes and you're going to be amazed at how brilliant you are because mm. there are things that are right there. But um, that that's kind of how we are. It's just like, oh, wow, that would be so great to do. And it adds in and it adds in and it adds in. And it, it just, it makes internal sense to us. Right, right. One question I, I'm curious about, especially with what you do, helping people uncover that uniqueness is I'm sure you've ran into this a few times, but what are some of the more common false beliefs people have, those, those self-imposed barriers that they, they put for themselves when you're trying to dig in there a little bit and uncover that uniqueness and you say, you, and you almost like you point it out to them, but then they go like, well, I don't know. And, and they put up their guards a little bit. Have you seen that a few times? And like, how, how do you help them navigate through that? Okay, I think I would address it a little differently. Okay. Um, one, as children, our first job is to survive. So we all figure out ways of adapting to our environment and whatever is going on in it so that we can survive. So we tell ourselves things that later on probably are not in our best interest. And because my master's is in counseling as well as coaching. I can spot that kind of stuff. I can see the behavior. And it's usually some form of protective behavior, which is shutting down an avenue that could be explored to make their business even better. So it's not finding one thing. I, if I said um, people don't believe in themselves, that's a very surface to me. I'm sorry. To me, that's a very surface thing. It's not really looking at what's going on. So let's say there's somebody who didn't believe in themselves. And as I start talking, I start seeing how they talk themselves down, how they do it in the presence of very particular kinds of people and particular kinds of circumstances. So it's, again, we're unique. There, I don't have five steps to becoming a master at whatever you're doing or something because everybody is unique. And if I don't pay attention to that, I can't help them find those things. So that's kind of how I look at it. Um, when I've <laughs> gotten at you one day and I said, you're not being yourself. Yeah. Um, but that was something you learned, you know, and it was something that was important. And so everything, every behavior that we have that's now counterproductive at one point in our life was essential. Right. And it, it's, so it's, it's not saying to someone, don't do that. It's removing the fear that, that caused it to be in place. So um, my job is to address the fear, not the behavior. And we look at um, kind of deflating it, if you will, um, and, and probably looking at it from a different point of view. And then there's no need for the behavior. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're, it sounds like you're, you're, more, you're more focused on finding the root cause versus the the behavior itself like let's dig deeper and find out right. why this behavior shows up because you can't fix the behavior without addressing the the root cause to it right yeah Absolutely. that makes sense and it doesn't have to be the the instance where it started but it has to be like in the presence of certain people this is what happens in the presence of this kind of pressure this is what happens and it, it's just finding what brings it up and right. then and then working with that and then you've got something because you can change someone's behavior on the surface for a period of time and under stress they'll revert right back right. until you get at what's really causing it so one of the things that brings me to is that even though i am dealing with entrepreneurs and we're dealing with their business um, what we're doing is dealing with that human being and you can't separate out the people have talked about it, separating out their personal and business life. You can't, you're one person. So um, there are benefits that go through their whole life that actually impact 
uh, relationships and, and their joy in life and everything because they're one person. So it doesn't matter if we're doing it in their business or their personal life, it will go through everything. Right. That makes sense. So <clears throat> to try and help the audience, because the goal of every right. episode here is to have one actionable piece of advice that they can take away and, and look to level up in, in that area that they're, they're struggling with. So from, from your perspective, I know this is tough because you've even said it a couple of times in our conversation here, but what, what's maybe that next step that they can take? What's that one thing that they can do such that will help them perhaps uncover that uniqueness? You said something earlier that I thought might, might make sense is, is almost like sitting down and asking themselves that question of, you know, what is it that really lights me up and then, or just writing down everything they know about a certain subject and then seeing where they like, they get a bit of a rush. Would that be something you think would make sense or, or, or do you have a, another piece of advice? Yeah, I think that does make sense. I mean, it, because whatever lights us up is what we're here to do. And I feel like we are all here to do something or, or else why would we be here? You know, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some other things that I would think it's like um, what also to write down, what do you feel that you're really competent at doing? What is it that you know better than almost anybody? Like sometimes you're in a room and people are talking about something and you have an idea and you know that you're at the heart of the idea and they're talking around it, but you got it. Hmm. So um, to write down, I, I'm believing a lot in writing things down. Because there's the process of writing, it, it integrates left and right brain. And it also um, helps you um, give real structure to what you're thinking. So to write down, what, what are you really good at? What are the things that you know you excel at? And if you put those all together, what would you have? That could be very interesting. Yeah, I think that's a good exercise, even in a broader sense, is, is just writing more frequently, whether it's journaling yeah. or, or just uh, doing mind mapping or mind dumps onto a piece of paper. I, I think that in itself is such a fantastic um, tool. Like you said, it just, for some reason, it just helps clear things up in, in, a, in a very strange way. Uh, so anybody who's listening who's not started either journaling or like Diane sharing, just writing down just your thoughts around a certain subject, I think that would be what I would suggest coming out of today is, is really like figure out uh, the uniqueness is just write down your strengths, write down what you're really good at, what, write down the things that people come to you and, and ask questions about, or you're always like searching online about. I think that might be it. What do you think, think Diane? I like that. I like yeah. that. And also, um, the thing that you're really good at may not be what you're doing at all. Hmm. So if there's something that comes out from left field, you know, people always come and talk to me about this, but it, I don't do that. So it could be a hidden thing. It could be something that you're doing already and you don't realize that you're really doing it. And, but other people do, and yeah. that would be a clue to what your next step is. I think that might be something we'll add. I, I feel like we're piecing together this exercise as we go. I found a lot of value when I did something similar to this, but I asked other people. So I asked people that were really close to me and truly understood who I was. What are some of the, you know, what, what are some of the things that you think I'm good at or strong at? And then I compared it to the list that I wrote out. And then I started seeing some, some correlations and, and, and things that were similar. And, and I just dug in a little bit deeper with that. That's what I ended up doing. And then the final thing that I'm sure you did, and, and I'm assuming, so forgive me, that you looked at it and you saw what felt right to you and you discarded what didn't feel right. I, yeah. I am so, so much um, in favor of people trusting themselves, trusting their gut, um, it, there's a difference and this is, this is hard to define in some ways. Like I, I am somewhat of a maverick. Don't fence me in, don't tell me what to do. But so for me, um, like I got a new, um, mastery journal. So I have to write in several different places, all the meetings and things that I'm doing. And 
I would not normally do that, but I can see it's something I need. So I, even though it was something I didn't want, I knew inside this was something that would help me be better at doing what I'm doing. Right. So you can take in all the information from the outside, but the bottom line is it has to feel like it's on target to you because sometimes people don't see us and they don't see us because we don't show them. So it, again, I, that's why I don't like hard and fast rules. And, um, and that's just me. I mean, that's part of my, uh, who I am too, but, um, be, because we have to be the final decider in our life and we know intuitively what's right for us and what isn't. So while it's good to check with other people, the bottom line is you have to trust yourself enough to go with your gut. That's I right. Mean, yeah. Branson, Branson is not listening to other people. He's going with his gut. <laughs> well, no, yeah, that's he's, it. He's, he's mentioned that a few times. He just, he does what he thinks is right. And Absolutely. even though a lot of people have, a lot of very successful people have done that, even though a lot of people will say what you're doing is wrong or you're like, you're absurd or whatever. They're like, no, I just know. And obviously the results speak for themselves. So I think there's a distinction here. Um, and everybody has a right to define the life that they want. So I'm looking for people who want to excel and for some people, that's not why they're here. They're here to fit in. They're here to work in a different particular way. But there's no one that can tell you, and this is why I work the way I do, um, what you should do. Because inside you know, if you can find somebody that will help link you up to you, then you've got it. Right. And, and I think that everybody who has excelled has done it that way. It's um, sometimes we're the lone ranger and sometimes we don't do it well. And so we need to learn, we need more tools and we need somebody else to come in and help us see what we're not seeing. Yeah. But yeah. essentially that's it. This is what we've got. We're it. And there's no mistake that we have that. It, it's infallible when you learn to listen. Yeah. That's awesome. This has been great. I really enjoyed the conversation, Diane. So if our audience wants to uh, learn more about you and, and reach out and get in contact with you, what's, what's the best place for them to, to come find you? Um, probably my website is, is pretty good. Um, and it's, it's strange, but it's www.entrepreneurmindmindworld.com. Okay. It's got a lot of things on there. It's got a description of how I work with people and it's got some um, testimonials from people and also some of the past things I've done, like the pitch events that I've done with investors and entrepreneurs. And so there's a lot of me there. And so they can get a feel for me and the way I like to work again I probably said this before but we have our 15 minute conversation it's like what you and I did yeah to feel if it's a good fit and if it is a good fit then um we work out a time to do the initial um intake and working with one another I write up something about what I think we need to focus on and why and then from there we we dig in and we work um, I probably won't work less than three or four months because change takes time. And I've worked with people for years because um, these people are people who keep evolving. Right. So um, it, it's just different the way it is. But um, to do a really good job, I don't, I don't want to do a surface job with anybody because I think that's a disservice. Because if we haven't worked to the place where they are trusting themselves enough to really go for it, then I, I leave them in a place that is vulnerable, I think. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it's mm -hmm. unsettling the old way of doing things and they haven't integrated the new way. Yeah. So that I won't do. I, yeah. I'm very um, clear about wanting to be there as a support. And um, I also let, I mean, I work with clients via Zoom, like we're doing here. But also sometimes a phone call is needed and I'll be there for that. So I really want to support my clients. I don't want to do like, okay, we talked this much. We can't ever talk again until whatever. Um, because I, if they're in mid 
change, I want to be there for them because that's yeah. important. Yeah, you don't have a meter that's like, oh, sorry, your time's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, I do in a way. <laughs> sort I, of, but. <laughs> the sessions are about an hour. Yeah. And, and I try to, I, again, see, here's this thing. When, when you're doing the work that I do, I'm teaching people. So if I say I'm going to be there for an hour, I should be there for an hour and I should leave because I've set a precedent. If, however, if there's some kind of crisis or something is really going on, then we can renegotiate. Yeah. But again, it's that balance, you know, because as a coach, you're also teaching. So, you know, and the other thing um, I like my clients to know is that I'm not perfect and I don't pretend to be and I don't want to be because it's not a human quality and I would not be human. Mm -hmm. um, but I want them to know that I'm always learning, you know, and I really listen to them. I mean, if I, uh, I've always said to my clients from the first day I started coaching a long, long time ago, I, this is what I'm getting. And this is what I think. If inside of you, you feel something different, always go with what you feel. And I stick by that. Because sometimes I could be missing a piece that they're picking up and they haven't communicated to me. Most of the time I'm pretty spot on, but I, I want to empower um, the people I'm working with because that's the whole goal. That's the reason why we're working. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're a coach. That's it. That's right. it. And I can't <laughs> stop myself. I mean, I can coach strangers on the street. I can attest to that because even yeah. in our original 15 minute call where I was trying to figure out like, is there a good fit here? You were, you flipped it a little bit on me, but that's okay. Cause that's, that's why I like coaches. I think there's just that, that natural, it's not really natural, but there's that desire to want to just always help and, 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 and improve other people and get them to where they they want to be right Absolutely. and that's the unique thing is you're not there providing unsolicited advice you're seeing something and you're going like i know you want to get to that next level and i see how you can do it and then you you provide the guidance on it yeah i love what you just said that it perfectly stated and that is my goal is what they want not what i think they should have or who i think they are it's what they decide yeah all right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Thanks, Diane. That was a pleasure. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll stay in touch and, and we'll talk sometime down the road. I'd love that. And thank you again, Chris. This has been wonderful. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Get Coach Podcast. If you're looking for more information, you can head over to our website, which is getcoachedpodcast.com. You'll find the show notes for this and every other episode there. And if getting actionable advice every week from professional coaches is something you want more of, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes.